Hello there and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be checking out this Optiplex 7070 small form factor computer that I bought on eBay under the four parts or not working section. This computer should have a Core i7-8700 in it, as well as 32GB of DDR4 RAM, and hopefully it will be pretty easy to get back up and running, because it's a pretty nice computer that I got for a decent price. According to the listing, the system should not display anything and should beep loudly. Also, it apparently should make a loud buzzing noise, so let's power on the system and find out exactly what's going on here. As in the past, I've had sellers provide inaccurate descriptions of the problems their broken computers are exhibiting. I plugged the system into a monitor, power, and a keyboard and mouse. I then pressed the power button and was greeted with no display. This system does have a GPU of some sort installed in it, so I ensured that I was plugging into this graphics card when testing the system. It was immediately clear that the system wasn't going to post, but I decided to let it sit for a while because it hadn't started to beep just yet, and I wanted to see if that would happen later. Additionally, though it's masked by the sound of the fans on my LED lights, there is an unusually loud hum coming from the computer. The exact sound that I've heard several times when the fans on cheap OEM low profile graphics cards break. After a little over two minutes of letting the computer sit while giving no display, it did exactly what the seller described and beeped very loudly at me. Sadly, this beep didn't sound like it was a code indicating something specific that was wrong, and so I started to troubleshoot with a very basic step removing the GPU. It is possible that either the GPU is broken or the computer is doing something and just not displaying it through the GPU's display outputs. Immediately after removing the GPU and plugging my DisplayPort cable directly into the motherboard, the system displayed a system scan screen where it was testing the memory. I let it finish whatever testing it was working on and when it was completed, it played the same beep sound and provided a pop-up window that said the hardware scan was complete and that no issues were found. However, one interesting thing was that the pop-up said the machine would restart and download CSOS for recovery. I did some research on this and it seems that this is Dell's support assist wanting to reinstall a Windows OS image, likely because there's something wrong with the image that's already on the system. I don't want this, so I shut down the machine and booted into the BIOS to see if there was an ability to stop support assist from trying to reinstall the OS. Luckily, it is possible to disable this feature as well as some other related features in the BIOS, and so I disabled all of them. While I was in the BIOS, I took a second to check that the hardware in the system was right, and the i7-8700 and 32GB of RAM were in there. After that was done, I exited the BIOS, fully expecting the system to spit out a no bootable media error. However, the computer instead started to boot into Windows something that I wasn't expecting at all. I didn't think this system was supposed to even have a drive in it, let alone a drive with Windows installed on it. I tried to see if Windows Automatic Repair would work to fix the image up as it was having some problems when trying to boot, just because I was curious what kind of setup was on this drive. But I gave up on it because I'm going to be wiping this drive and installing a fresh version of Windows anyway. I'll be coming back and testing this GPU later, but for now, I'm going to open the system to take out the SSD and wipe it, as well as to replace the thermal paste and dust off some parts. The SSD in the system was a 512GB NVMe SSD, which is a really welcome surprise. Taking a look at the SSD, I could identify the controller chip, the NAND flash chips, and another chip which I looked up and confirmed was a DRAM cache. Seems like the drive that I got with this system is actually a reasonably good one, and assuming its health isn't entirely mutilated, I'm going to be reusing this SSD. I pulled the RAM out to take a look at it, and this system came with some SK Hynix RAM. Specifically, it came with two 16GB 2666MHz sticks, which is a pretty awesome set of RAM to have in this system. I do really like the fact that it came with two 16GB sticks rather than four 8GB sticks, as these leave room to upgrade the system to as much as 64GB of RAM. While I was working on this RAM and the rest of the system, I put the SSD into an external holder and connected it to a separate computer to both wipe it fully and to inspect its smart data. The overall drive health isn't as high as it could possibly be, being at 89%, but it's still got more than enough health left to be a usable SSD. There was also quite a lot of power on hours on this drive, but nothing that concerned me much considering that it's a reasonably high quality Keoxia drive. I then set the drive cleaning started and continued my work on the computer's hardware. I removed the CPU cooler so that I could replace the thermal paste under there, which is likely a very chalky dust at this point. I also did this so that I could blow some dust out from the bottom of the heatsink 
as that's where it tends to collect with these blower-style coolers. As expected, the thermal paste was in pretty bad shape, and there was a little bit of dust on the cooler, so I cleaned all of that up. Before I put new paste on and remount this cooler though, here's a closer look at our 8700, which should still be a decent chip with its 6 cores and 12 threads. One thing that I find interesting about this computer is the size of the heatsink. This block of aluminum is really quite small for an i7 like this computer has, and it's not like Dell was running out of any space to make their cooler a little taller. They absolutely could have made this aluminum block taller and gotten much better cooling performance because they had the room to do so. Additionally, the temperatures this cooler provided aren't that great, so it really would have been worthwhile to put a little more money into this heatsink, but oh well. Anyway, I put the CPU cooler back on and reinstalled the RAM, when I remembered that I should give the CMOS battery a checkup because they're sometimes getting kind of low in these older PCs. Although, this one really isn't that old, being released in 2019. I'll just make sure to disable the support assist stuff in the BIOS once I'm done working inside the computer because removing this battery will likely reset the BIOS settings. I'm glad that I checked the CMOS battery though because when testing using my custom CMOS battery tester, video about it on my channel if you like it, it tested bad at around 2.6 volts. I grabbed a much healthier battery and installed it into the motherboard. By this point, the wipe on the Kioxia drive was complete and I could install it into the computer again. I replaced the final few parts of this system, and now it should be nearly done. I'm not going to reinstall the GPU, as I'm still unsure of whether or not it's completely functioning, plus the fan on it seems to have been the cause of the humming noise. Additionally, uninstalling this GPU, which I think is an R5 430, is not going to downgrade the performance of this computer very much, because it's a pretty low performance card, even when compared to the integrated graphics on the CPU. Moving on, however, I installed Windows 10 Pro, which went just fine, got drivers and updates all sorted out, which can be a bit of a nightmare on these newer Optiplexes, as their drivers are seemingly much pickier than on the older 3rd and 4th generation Intel Optiplexes. Now that the system is in a stable, up-to-date state, I fired up Cinebench R23 and also brought Hardware Info 64 into the mix for the sake of checking out the 8700's performance and the performance of the depressingly small cooler. In Cinebench R23 multi-core, the i7-8700 was able to pull off a score of 7,267 points, while running in the mid to high 80s temperature-wise. The CPU did occasionally spike up to 99 degrees, and it did touch into thermal throttling territory multiple times, although it never stayed there for very long. In single core, the CPU hovered around the upper 70s in terms of temperature, while managing a score of 1,211 points. These are both pretty reasonable scores, however the temperature that the CPU was running at was quite high and the default fan curve was definitely prioritizing noise over temperature. In these Dell Optiplex BIOSes though, there is an option to override the fan curve that's set by the motherboard and to pin the fans to 100% speed all the time. So, just for the fun of seeing if I could 1. get the temperatures down a bit and 2. raise the multicore score a bit, I decided to turn this option on and run Cinebench one more time. The fan was very loud with this setting, but temperatures were massively improved. It seems that running the fan at full speed dropped the temperatures by anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, which is a massive drop. However, even with this temperature improvement, combined with the fact that the CPU did not once touch into thermal throttling during the test, we only managed to grow our score by 101 points, raising it from 7,267 to 7,368. This is still an improvement though, but I'd say it isn't worth the extra noise. Also, since the single core test seemed to run fine with the stock fan curve, I didn't run it with the full speed fan because I doubted it would make any difference. After turning off the fan control override and letting my ears breathe again, I exited audit mode and finalized the Windows install before taking the computer apart once more. Now, why am I taking it apart again? Well, when I was doing my thermal paste swap, I forgot a step that I usually do with these desktops, and that is to take out the power supply, inspect, and clean it. I took the power supply out, opened it up, which you should only do if you know how to work safely around high voltage, as the capacitors in the unit can sometimes hold a charge, and then I inspected the capacitors in the power supply. Sometimes in older PCs, these capacitors can be on their way out, 
and I want to ensure that that's not the case with this power supply. Everything looks good here, so I took it outside and used an air blower to dust it out before putting everything back together. With the Optiplex 7070 entirely taken care of, it's now time to take a look at this R5 430 GPU that I pulled out of it. I installed this card into my testbed system and tested the two DisplayPort outputs that it has on it. Both of the outputs displayed without any issue, so I think the card is working just fine, and there was only a conflict between the support assist screen and this specific card. It's likely that the previous owner could have fixed this system by even just moving their DisplayPort cable to a motherboard attached output, going through the support assist prompts, and then switching back to the GPU's outputs, but instead it was sold as a broken system. Although, I'll never complain about an easy fix. The card is still a little noisy though, so I pulled the heatsink off the card so that I can repaste it and so that I can have easy access to the fan. I unscrewed the fan from the heatsink and first cleaned off the caked on dust before peeling back the sticker hoping to get access to its bearing. If I could have got access to the bearing, I would have put a drop or two of lubricant in there and installed it back into the card where it likely would have stopped making the humming sound. However, disappointingly, the access to the bearing was blocked with a solid piece of plastic that I couldn't seem to get out. Even though it looks like there's a seam of some sort in it, I still couldn't remove the plug. This means that I won't be able to lubricate the fan bearing on this card today. Still, I'll reassemble the card with fresh thermal paste and keep it on hand as a known good display adapter that I can use in the future when troubleshooting other PCs. But hey, in the end, I got the system functioning properly again and have given it a small service. This computer should be ready to be used for quite a long time still, considering it's only from 2019 and is new enough to not have to run into any issues with Windows 10 being unsupported. Well, that's all that I have for you today. I hope that you were able to at least enjoy this video and maybe even learn a thing or two. In any case, I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.